Humans, orcas and short-finned pilot whales all go through the menopause and in 2018 it was discovered that belugas and narwhals also do. For those of you who are unsure, in humans the menopause is when a female stops having periods and is no longer able to get pregnant naturally. Many animals do not have a monthly period and so for whales the term means a natural end to fertility that occurs before the end of the natural lifespan. In most animals, females continue to be fertile all through their natural lifespan, although they do become less fertile as they get older. Their post-reproductive lifespan is usually equivalent to the length of time it takes to raise their last born offspring to independence. However, humans can live for decades after they are no longer able to reproduce. The average age of the menopause in a woman is 51 years, whilst the average lifespan worldwide is 72. In cetaceans, studies that have lasted decades have shown that in orcas, no female over the age of 48 has given birth, although they can live until 90 years of age. In short-finned pilot whales, no female over the age of 36 was found to be pregnant, and they are known to live until they are 60 years of age. You can see from the graphs in this study how long various whales live for after they have become reproductively inactive. The green areas show when the females in the population are reproductively active, orange shows when the individuals are no longer reproductively active and therefore post-reproductive. The length of time belugas, narwhals and short-finned pilot whales live for post-reproductive is clearly seen to be for decades. So why do humans and some whales live for such a long time post-reproductive and way beyond the time needed to look after their last born? One hypothesis which studies on humans have suggested is that through the care of grandchildren, menopausal women increase their daughter's reproductive success and their grandchildren's survival. Grandmothers are able to look after their grandchildren, thus enabling mothers to have their next baby sooner without reducing the survival chances of their previous offspring. There has been some research on resident orcas and the reasons why the females might go through the menopause. Their family structure means that at some point, the older mother will have a calf at the same time as one or more of their daughters. In one study, which looked at 43 years worth of data from two resident killer whale populations, 525 calves were born, with 161 calves being co-generational births. Out of these 161 calves, 31% of them died, and it was the older mother's calf that was more likely to die being 1.7 times more likely to lose her calf compared to the younger mothers. It is thought that the reason behind this is due to competition for food. A nursing mother needs 42% more food and because orcas share the food they catch, she ends up getting a bigger share. It is the old mother that probably finds and captures most of the food, but her daughters and granddaughters receive the greater portion. These older mothers also share food with their sons which means that calves born late in a mother's life may not get all the food that they need and starve to death. In a fascinating paper investigating the grandmother effect on orcas, demographic records dating from the 1970s until 2016 from two resident orca populations were collated. The orca populations were the southern and northern populations found in the coastal waters of Washington State and British Columbia. Statistical analysis of this long-term data revealed that there is indeed a grandmother effect amongst orcas and that it is not just a human phenomenon. In this study, the scientists found that grandmothers provide support to their grand offspring, but this was more pronounced if the grandmother was post-reproductive. Stopping reproduction at a relatively young age stops the competition for food as discussed earlier, which leads to the higher mortality of the grandmother's calves but it also increases the benefits to her grand offspring. The scientists looked at what happened when a grandmother died and found that her death reduced the survival of both her male and female grand offspring in the two years following her death. If the grandmother was reproductive, the mortality risk to the grand offspring was 4.5 times higher than with the living grandmother. And if she was post-reproductive, the mortality risk rose to 6.7 times higher. Research has shown that post-reproductive females have amazing ecological knowledge and are great leaders, which is of huge benefit to the pod when foraging for their food. 
The resident orcas eat Chinook salmon, and it has been observed that in the years where salmon abundance is low, post-reproductive aged females are more likely to lead the group's movement. As a consequence, if there is a lean year in the number of salmon, the impact of losing a post-reproductive grandmother on the survival rate of the grand offspring was more pronounced. The researchers also modelled survival trajectories for a 5-year-old, 15-year-old and 20-year-old orca if their grandmother died. The red line shows when their grandmother is alive, the blue line is when their reproductive grandmother dies and the green line is when their post-reproductive grandmother dies. In all cases, it wasn't just the survival in the first two years after their grandmother died that was impacted, but their long-term survival was also. Even if the orca was 20 years of age at the time of the grandmother's death, they survived longer with a grandmother, with survival even greater if the grandmother was post-reproductive. There was no evidence that grandmothers, either reproductive or post-reproductive, reduced the interval between births of calves. In fact, there seems to be a slight increase in the birth interval if there is a post-reproductive grandmother around. Possibly, as there was an increase in the survival rate of the first calf, and so the birth of the second calf was delayed. Mothers are very important too. A study carried out in 2012 found that losing a mother meant that young males were three times more likely to die in the year after their mother's death. If they were over 30, that increased to eight times. In young females, there was no increase, but older daughters were 2.7 times more likely to die. There is little research on belugas, narwhals and short-finned pilot whales and the reasons why their females go through the menopause. Short-finned pilot whales have a matriarchal society just like orcas, but belugas and narwhals have a more complex social structure than that, so perhaps the evolutionary mechanism for a long post-reproductive life is different in these whales. Another thought is that most long-lived mammals don't go through the menopause, even if they have a matriarchal society such as elephants. So why don't elephants go through the menopause? It is possible that because the males leave the group that they are born into, the female's relatedness in the group stays constant, or even declines with age, so it is better for her to keep on reproducing until she dies, rather than go through the menopause. Whereas in resident orcas, the female's relatedness with the group increases with age, so the benefits of helping the group increases with age, and may have been a reason why the menopause evolved in some mammals and not in others. The evolution of the menopause has been fascinating to research and has personally left me with more questions than answers. Only more research will reveal the secret of what is a rare phenomenon.